So, operators. We've been talking about operators. Let's talk about operators some more. Okay, so I'll remind you, this is the general form of our Schrodinger equation. So, um, right, we know that that was um, H psi equals E psi, okay? So here is a general form of an eigenvalue equation. And right, the way this works, the operator operates on the eigenfunction. And what we get out of it is the eigenvalue um, and the original wave function, okay? And of course, if we used the Hamiltonian total energy operator, um, then the eigenvalue we get out is the energy. Okay, so for example, energy operator operates on psi, returns energy. Or if I did the, uh, let's say, position operator operating on psi, that would return to me the position and, of course, the original wave function. All right? So for example, let's play with an example here. All right? Let's suppose... Um, let's see here. I'm going to write this up in the generic, in the general version. Um, and so this is an uppercase Greek letter omega. And recall, we put a little hat on it to note that it's an operator. Operator operates on psi and returns. This is not a W. It's a lowercase omega. Um, and so that's our eigenvalue, which is a real number, a real single valued number. So let's suppose uh, that my operator is d dx, so first derivative of position, okay? And once again, these aren't necessarily physically accurate operators and wave functions. We're just playing with the math. And let's suppose psi equals e to the ax, okay, where a is a constant. So what is omega? Let's find the eigenvalue. So now when omega operates on psi, um, I can write that as d dx of e to the ax, okay? And that all equals a e a x, okay? Which equals, right, we know psi is e to the ax, so all of this just equals a times psi. Therefore, a is our eigenvalue and this works beautifully. This operator and this wave function would be valid um, operators and eigen, uh, eigenfunctions. Excuse me. So psi is the eigenfunction. This would be a valid quantum mechanical operator. Okay. So, but now let's see. I have another example we could do. Um, okay. So suppose now that we still have this same operator. Okay. So I'll draw a line here. So we're going to move on. I'll say this is example one on operator. Let's do example two. So we'll still play with the same operator, ddx. Um, but now let's suppose that psi equals eax squared. Okay. So now if I operate, um, oops, let's see here. So now if I operate on psi, okay, so that's d dx e to the a x squared, okay, if I now carry out this operation, so recall when I take the derivative of this exponential function, I'm going to take the derivative of what's in the exponential and then put it out in front. So the derivative of a x squared becomes 2 a x and then the original, right, the operation then dictates that that would have to be 2ax e ax squared, um, which would then equal 2ax times psi, because e ax squared was psi. Okay, so this is not an eigenvalue because of the x, right? We recognize x will take on a large number of values, okay? Um, so we have to tread lightly. We have to tread, uh, I guess I should say carefully, when looking at operators and wave functions, okay? We can only have um, operators 
that will give us eigenvalues, all right? So moving along, so let's do a more physically realistic set of operators with a somewhat still slightly realistic um, wave function, somewhat slightly being this, right, this 1D wave function. And I'm going to play the same game with A equals 0 or B equals 0, okay? So my, um, let's see here. Um, so my linear momentum, right, if I want to know what is the linear momentum, so that's going to be the um, eigenvalue. And to get that eigenvalue, I have to use the operator corresponding to this linear momentum. Okay. So the linear momentum operator, recall, is the following. Um, H bar over I D D X. Okay. And so now if I use this operator and operate on psi, uh, let's do it for when uh, b equals 0 initially. Okay, so we'll say this. And then so now we're just going to say suppose psi is a e i k x. Okay, when this now operates on the wave function, we're going to have h bar divided by i multiplied by the first derivative of psi. And I'm going to put some extra parentheses around here just so we recognize we're in the order of mathematics. We're first taking the derivative of this function, then we would multiply it by h bar over i. Okay. Um, so let's see here. When I do that, um, just making sure I write down the right result here, okay, um, we are going to get the following. So for the, um, I'm going to keep h bar i out in front for now. And we know that um, the ddx of a will just also come out in front, okay? And then now ddx of e i k x is just going to be equal to uh, k, let's see here. Yes, it will just be equal to k i, right? Because those are the constants. Yes, k i and then e i k x. Okay. And so now what we've got going on here, the i's and the i's will cancel. Um, and I have a k h bar e i k x so what is that all equal to well i remember that a e i k x is psi okay so let's put all that together k h bar times a e i k x and we know that that's all equal to psi right so we can see my eigenvalue is i'll uh, circle it right here or excuse me let, let's just make sure I'm writing this all down to completion. K h bar, and then that's the original wave function. Beautiful. So k h bar is a constant. It is an eigenvalue. Okay. So um, we could say then, I'll just write this succinctly, um, linear momentum of psi of x, okay, in this case equals, and I'm going to write the positive sign just so we know that we've got it there written down, okay? Equals positive k h bar psi x. And so now if we were to do this for, um, so let's see, this is for b equals zero. If we were to do this for a equals zero, I'm just gonna describe this briefly because perhaps as you, you might see where this is gonna go, okay? So when a is equal to zero, my wave function is just b e negative i k x. And so now the only difference will be here when I take this derivative, right? Uh, I'm going to have that negative sign moves down in front. Okay. So try it for yourself. I'll just show you the result. Um, it's negative k h bar becomes the eigenvalue. And of course, 
multiplied by the original wave function. Okay, we're going to come back to this result because as it turns out, there's physical significance to this result of getting these two different eigenvalues for linear momentum when either b is zero or a is zero, given that they're equal and opposite. There is some physically significant results to this, and I'm going to come back to it um, next week in our lectures. Okay, so carrying over.